Ideal Masters, a name few know and even fewer know the entities that the title belongs to, and those that do often wish they did not. Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kamal, and more importantly welcome to the first in a series that will be an ongoing one. This is the Elder Scrolls Lore series, a series in which we have a more in-depth look at the intricacies of the Elder Scrolls to help us better understand the universe we so love. Today we will be focusing our gaze upon the Ideal Masters and answer the question of who are they, or perhaps even what are they. The Ideal Masters are by far the most requested lore topic for me to cover thanks to all of your comments down below. Links to my other Elder Scrolls lore videos can be found down in the description along with links to my social media. Give them a click after this video. The Ideal Masters, a name you may have heard. It's one of those things that kind of knocks around here and there when discussing lore, but very few actually know what an Ideal Master is. That will change. Now, the Ideal Masters are mysterious, hmm, entities that rule over the pocket of oblivion known to us mortals as the Soul Can. They control every aspect of its reality, similarly to how Daedric Princes rule over their respective planes of oblivions. For example, Shio Gorath controls the Shivering Isles. Well, the Soul Can is the plane of oblivion controlled by the esoteric Ideal Masters. If you have ever visited this realm hazed in ghostly Gozuma, you have probably seen an Ideal Master but just did not know what it was as their physical form is abstract, when they choose to take physical form that is. The Ideal Masters once knew the burden of flesh like you and I. In Eon's past they transcended beyond physical manifestation and now exist as non-corporeal beings. Not bound by the physical realm but ascending to a level of metaphysics, a plane of existence that we mere humans cannot comprehend. However, while they are omniscient, when an Ideal Master chooses to interact with other, less evolved entities such as ourselves or their servants, they take to a crystalline structure, the very same that we encounter in the Soul Can. If you have ever bumped into one of these strange floating crystals that slowly suck your life away as you approach it, then you have interacted with an Ideal Master. However, be warned Traveller, as the Ideal Masters are not to be dealt with, as they eternally seek souls to bring to the Soul Can where they are forever trapped and forced to pledge service to the Ideal Masters. While wandering the Soul Can, one will run across seemingly infinite lost souls, aimlessly trudging through the endless fields of bones and damned spirits. The Soul Can is the dumpster for all souls trapped within soul gems, creatures, people, and even some dragons end up here. An infinite well and harvesting ground of soul energy for the Ideal Masters to rule over and reap. Strangely, the Ideal Masters have no relation or connection to the Daedra or the Aedra, which for beings of such power, this is quite obscure and unnatural. So where did they come from? Well, believe it or not, these ethereal godlike entities known as the Ideal Masters actually originated on Nern, on Tamriel. While the races are unknown, during the Morethic Era, an early order of sorcerers who practiced in the dark arts of necromancy and trafficking of souls grew very powerful. Eventually, they found their physical forms to be burdensome, unacceptably weak and limiting. Through necromagic and soul magic, this group of sorcerers transcended from their bodies and evolved to beings of pure soul energy. They then entered oblivion and selected an area of chaotic creation to create their very own soul harvesting plane of oblivion, the Soul Can, a realm ideal for their role as soul merchants. Although now omnipresent entities, gold means nothing. Only the souls to fuel their endless life have value. These entities then named themselves the Ideal Masters. Although immortal, they are reluctant to expend magicka as this diminishes their eternity. Sadly, in my humble opinion, Bethesda missed a great opportunity as we cannot actually interact with the Ideal Masters in Skyrim's DLC Dawnguard. However, 
In 1997's An Elder Scrolls Legend Battlespire, we can interact with them, and we will. It took me four days to get this footage, by the way. These interactions will give you a very good idea of how eerily psychopathic these ideal masters are. Selfish and devoid of empathy, they seek one thing, souls. They can be found on the third level, the soul can, resting in stone coffins. But be wary as we now speak to the ideal masters. Who disturbs our rest? I'm a celebrated master of arts, martial and arcane, intent on a quest and worthy of your aid. You are not invited here. Why do you disturb our rest? I'm a traveler through the outer realms. I have come upon your world and found it wondrous strange. I seek to learn more of its mysteries. What is this place and what is its purpose? You stand within the precincts of the Soul Cairn, an otherworldly refuge dedicated to peace love, eternal rest, and harmony. You stand before one of its makers, whose name is so exalted you may not even speak it. You walk among its servants, who have pledged themselves in service to us, and who in reward have been gifted with life eternal and the peace that passes all mortal understanding. I am humbled before the splendor of your creation and the glory of its faithful servants. Would you enter our service, mortal? I am surprised and honored by the prospect, but I am curious, how might I enter your service? Put off your mortal garments and stand naked in the spirit. Your stained tablet must first be washed white by the fires of manna. That sounds very nice. And how would I go about getting my tablet washed? Seek the twin fingers of life in the chapel of love. Stand upon the pedestal and bathe yourself in the manna beams. The corruption of the flesh shall fall away and the spirit shall be revealed in its glory. Then may you stand before us and serve for eternity in peace and joy. Ah, bathe myself in manna beams. Yes, flesh falls away in chunks, I bet. Sorry, I'll struggle along with my comfortable old stained tablet. Thank you. Unless you join our service, we offer you no aid. Affairs of mortals are not our concern. Each mode of mana spent diminishes our eternity. Go, and trouble me no more. But you speak with our brethren, who perhaps better recall wearing flesh, and who may look more generously upon your request. Look, I don't know what's going on here, but it smacks of necromancy and I won't stand for it. Clearly, you have little or no comprehension of necromancy and are therefore in no position to judge. You are clearly mortal, ignorant, and pitiable, so I will overlook your impertinence. Now, introduce yourself or leave. Would you enter our service, mortal? How do I enter your service again? You must die and be born again. The form your spirit may take afterwards varies. You have seen the servants of our realm. You mean I die and become a walking skeleton or a howling ghost? If that's how it works, then I'm not joining your service. Perhaps you can explain why we would wish to lavish our favors on one so churlish as to refuse us service. You will lavish your favors on this churlish one, or I'll batter your servants to dust, take everything I can pry loose, and wreck anything I can't. Well then, if you can make good on such threats, then surely you have no need of our aid. You must have a lot to do, so I won't keep you. Goodbye. And that was the nice one too. So it is evident that they are entirely convinced that entering their service is a gift. Love, happiness, everlasting life, rest and harmony. It turns out that their servants, the Mist Men, Bone Men and Wrath Men of the Soul Can, feel differently about this. You have taken my life and given me nothing. Eternal happiness, life everlasting, no. Eternal nightmare, death everlasting, nothing now, nothing forevermore. Very few ever escape the ideal masters, and those that do only do so because those actions favor.
the ideal masters in the long run. Except of course in Skyrim where they totally just skipped over the lore behind the ideal masters and ignored their godlike power and their mathematical precision in all of their decisions. Or perhaps letting the Dragonborn escape was ideal for the ideal masters in the long run. Who knows? But as we know, the Soul Can is filled with legions of the dead whose souls were trapped or banished to this desolate plane. Necromancers commonly summon these trapped souls back to Mundus, although that art has since been lost by the fourth era. Those who seek great power and knowledge in the school of necromancy would historically contact the ideal masters, and in exchange for souls would be given armies of the undead. Although their fate would always be the same as the armies they commanded, the Ideal Masters would deceive these necromancers into eternally serving them and claim their souls too. A notable example of this deception is the dragon Dernavir, who during the Marathic era delved into necromancy, or Alokadilon as it is known in Dovazul, the dragon tongue. Like many great necromancers, he contacted the Ideal Masters in search of their favour. They bestowed upon him the power to summon great armies of the dead. In exchange, all he had to do was guard a prisoner until her death. This prisoner was Valerica, Serana's mother. The twist, she is a vampire, and as a prisoner would live eternally. So Dernavir was deceived and by his pact would have to eternally guard Valerica in the soul can under the guise of the ideal masters. Never make a pact with an ideal master, they will bend their words until they are shaped into the chains that will bind you to their realm and service for all time. So while little is known about the ideal masters, we know enough to know that they are very dangerous. With their transcendence beyond flesh, they have also stripped themselves of most emotion, not understanding empathy or honesty. Cold and calculated, mathematically minded, they only choose to expend energy if it will result in them gaining more souls. Blinded by their own existence, they believe the soul can is a realm of peace, harmony, everlasting love and eternal rest. While in reality, it is a prison for souls both trapped and tricked into their service to fuel the Ideal Masters' eternal life. Ironically, the Ideal Masters are everything but. They are selfish gods of a realm designed for harvesting souls. Necromancy is all fun and games until you meet your master your ideal masters. So I do hope that you have enjoyed the deep delve into the soul can and its creators, the ideal masters. Equally so, I do hope you have learned something about the beautifully mad universe that these wonderful games take place in, the Elder Scrolls. But most importantly of all, what do you think about the ideal masters? Are they calculated and logical or evil and dangerous? Probably both to be honest. Be sure to let me know your thoughts on the Ideal Masters and what you would like me to cover in this Elder Scrolls lore series. If you did enjoy this video, please do me a kindness and leave a like. Be sure to share it with all of your friends. Leave a comment with your Elder Scrolls lore video ideas and your thoughts on the Ideal Masters. And of course, if you did enjoy this video and you want to see more videos similar to this one, please subscribe. It helps me know that people enjoy these kind of videos and in the long run will result in more of them. My other Elder Scrolls lore video links can be found down in the description. Down there are also links to my social media. If you would like to support the channel in a more personal way, you can become a patron on Patreon. As I'm sure you know, all of my time and energy goes into making these videos that I create for you to enjoy. So your support is most appreciated and welcomed in any and all forms. Feel free to check out the playlist on screen. Thank you for watching, thank you for supporting the channel, and I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there soon.